um, today I continue reading the book Teachings on Love by Thay Thuyết Nhật Hạm for chapter 4, Love and Understanding. Today I just finished a part of this chapter. <clears throat> May I learn to look at myself with the eyes of understanding and love? Again, we begin with ourselves to understand our own true nature. Sometimes our thoughts run around in circles and we are engulfed in distrust, pessimism, conflict, sorrow, and jealousy. When our mind is like that, our words and actions will naturally manifest this characteristic of mind and cause harm to ourselves and others. The practice is to shed the light of mindfulness on our habitual patterns so we can see them clearly. When a thought or idea arises, we recognize it and smile to it. In Buddhism, the mind is likened to a monkey swinging from branch to branch, leading us again and again into the dark world of pain and suffering. <clears throat> the practice is to shine the light of mindfulness on our mind's paths so we can see them clearly and prevent our mind from wandering down paths of inappropriate attention. Whenever we hear a conversation or witness an event, our intention can be appropriate or inappropriate. If we are mindful, we will recognize which it is, nurture appropriate attention and release inappropriate attention, noting, I am aware that this inappropriate attention will not benefit me or those I care about. Then we know how to maintain a calm, joyful mind. Our words and actions will manifest peace and happiness. We will be our own true friend and a good friend to many others. Next, we use mindfulness to illuminate our speech. We may have resolved not to say certain things, but then find ourselves saying them anyway. Mindfulness can help us stop before we say things that create conflict for ourselves and others. Physical actions, a glance, a wave of the hand, the way we stand, also manifest our state of mind. Each gesture reveals our joy or sadness, love or hate, mindfulness or forgetfulness. Mindfulness eliminates what we are doing, how we stand and sit, how we look at others, how we smile, and how we frown. May I be is an important practice. Our mind is described as a story containing many seeds, both positive and negative. We have to be aware of all of them. When we are in touch with our suffering, we have to know that there are other seeds too. Our ancestors transmitted seeds. Even if these seeds are buried deep in our con consciousness, we can water them and help them grow stronger. Touching the seeds of joy, peace, freedom, solidity, and love within ourselves is an important practice and we'll ask our friends to do the same for us. If we love someone, we have to recognize and touch the positives in him every day and refrain from watering the seeds of anger, despair, and hatred. That will help him grow in the direction of health and happiness. As you concentrate on another person as the object of your love meditation, if she is sitting to your right, so if she leaves east of you, send your energy to the east. If she is sitting to your right, send your energy to the right. Surround her with the energy of love. Even if she is not in need of your love, but it's this way, trial in deep concentration. At Plum Village, the students were asked to write down all the positive attributes to their parents. One young man had a difficulty with his father, but he has he was hesitant to write about his mother because he thought that it would be too unpleasant. He was surprised when he began the meditation and was able to touch many positive qualities in his mother. The more positive things he discovered, the more he his resentment subsi subsidized. Uh, penetrating with his this meditation, he reestablished his connection with his mother and love flowed from his heart. 
After that, he wrote his mother a love letter based on his insights. He acknowledged the positive qualities in her and expressed gratitude for her presence. When his mother received this letter, she was deeply moved. Her son had never talked to her so positively before. She told a neighbor about it and about how happy she was to have her son again. And she expressed regret that her mother was not still alive. She wanted to write a similar letter to her own mother. When the young man learned of this, he wrote, do not think grandma has passed away. She is still alive in you. Please write to her. I'm sure she will read your letter even as you are writing it. We got this insight from the practice. Our parents and all our ancestors are alive in us. We are a construction of them. After receiving his second letter, his mother did write to her mother. One person practicing can help the whole family. May I be able to recognize and touch the seeds of joy and happiness in myself. We are the gardeners who identify, water, and cultivate the best seeds. We need some faith that there are good seeds within us, and then with appropriate attention, we need to touch those seeds while we practice sitting meditation, walking meditation, and throughout the day. May I learn to identify and see the sources of anger, craving, and delusion in myself. To identify means to recognize the presence of something. To see the sources means to understand its nature, where it came from, what circumstances made it arise, and how long it has been there. This is a process of deep looking. The primary cause of anger is the seed of anger in ourselves. Two people might hear the same words and see the same things, yet only one becomes angry. Words and ev events only stimulate what is inside us. If there were no seeds of anger in our store consciousness, anger would not arise. We need to master our own anger before we can help others do the same. When the flames of anger flare up, we tend to lash out at those who have watered our seeds of anger. It is like fighting our house on fire and instead of putting out the flames, chasing those we think started it. Or arguing with others only waters the seed of anger in us. When anger rises, return to yourself and use the energy of mindfulness to embrace, soothe, and illuminate it. Do not think you will feel better if you can make the other person suffer too. This is a dangerous way of thinking. In their anger, the other person might respond even more harshly and the anger will escalate. The Buddha taught that when anger arises, close your eyes and ears, return to yourself and tend to the source of anger within. Transforming your anger is not just for your personal liberation. Every one around you and even those more distant will benefit if you succeed. That's it for today. Tomorrow I will continue with chapter four.